What insecticide will you be using on your corn this year? And what herbicides will you be using? Where we're going with all this is there could be interaction between your insecticide and your herbicide that could actually hurt your corn yield a lot. It's a big deal. We wanted to focus on that today. Well, you know what, Brent? We've kind of gotten away from this for a number of years now. We had traits in our crops or, hey, let's just use a rootworm resistant corn and I'm just going to spray Roundup on it. That's it. No interaction, no worries, no problems. Now, all of a sudden, hey, I need some kind of tank mix partner or a different herbicide to kill my Roundup resistant weed. And also, I need to use insecticide again because the pressure is just so heavy now with corn rootworms in my area or I'm fearing that there may be some resistant rootworms out there. And we're getting into a whole new thing, Brian, but you know what? It's not new. It's basically getting back to the 1990s. Well, it is similar to the 1990s, early 1990s. But the whole thing is there are a lot of new ALS herbicides now. And you know what? The early 1990s, that was 20 years ago. So a lot of people forget about this interaction. I remember when Accent herbicide first came out, for example. That was the first really good post-emerge grass killer we had. And I was out looking at a field in South Dakota where a farmer had used counter insecticide. He followed up with Accent herbicide. And I mean, that corn was just devastated. It, it looked just fried. So, I mean, it looked like you had taken liquid 28% and sprayed about 40 gallons right over the top of this corn. It just burnt all the leaves. It was really something, and that was the first time I'd ever seen it. And after that, I just always thought, you know, I'm going to make sure that I'm telling every farmer I'm dealing with, don't use an organophosphate insecticide and then follow with an ALS herbicide. Now, since that time, we've also had these HPPD products come out like Callisto and Laudus and balance, and those also have interaction with organophosphate insecticides, so we need to talk through all that. When you think about straight organophosphate insecticides, the most common two that people think about are Counter and Lorsban. But also there's older products like Thymet that may still be available in some areas. If you've got a straight organophosphate, it's a big caution. Now, the question gets to be, what about some of these combination products? You look at things like Aztec. Well, that's mostly organophosphate. Smart Choice would be another one that's got a blend of a pyrethroid and an organophosphate. I mean, there are other products out there too that you just have to be cautious of when you're using them. Now, when you think about pyrethroids, we don't have a big issue with pyrethroids and interacting with ALS type herbicides. Things like Force and Capture, those are safe products in terms of interactions with other herbicides. Okay, like Darren said, with these organophosphate insecticides, those are the ones we're concerned about. Another one that Darren didn't mention was Fortress there. There's not a lot of Fortress used anymore, but that is still a product that you might consider using on your farm. The problem becomes with these organophosphates, for some reason, that plant uses about the same things to metabolize that organophosphate that it does the ALS and the HPPD herbicides, so it can't metabolize both of them at the same time, or at least it's not very good at that, especially when the organophosphate is very systemic. Counter is the most systemic of the organophosphates. So counter is the one we worry about the most. In other words, if you're going to use counter insecticide, absolutely do not use an ALS or HPPD product on your farm. Don't do it. If you're going to use a Lorsban or a Fortress or, or one of the combination products like Aztec or Smart Choice, you know, you've got some risk, but not nearly to the degree that you do counter. Well, here again, Brian, back in the 90s, you know, things have changed a little bit. We were mainly worried about what you're going to use post-emerge after you put this product down. Now we've got a lot of combination pre-emerge herbicides, something like a Triple Flex and Sure Start that are very popular in our area that, wow, we've got an ALS product in there. We may be putting down in addition to putting that insecticide down at planting time, now we're really at risk because we put both of those down at the same time. So when we think about those pre-emerge herbicides, watch yourself on these combination products. Now, if you're using, say, a Harness Extra, which would be Harness and Atrazine, you know, there's no big issue there. But when you start using these combination ones that are really specifically designed for broadleaf control, that's where we're really concerned. Okay, so again, Darren mentioned Sure Start and Triple Flex that would both contain ALS herbicides. Keep in mind that anything that's got Python in it, that's what's in that Sure Start or Triple Flex. Python is an ALS. On the HPPD side of things, that's where Balance Flex is. So any combination that's got Balance or Balance Flex in there, that's an HPPD, and that's something to be cautious about. So that's the pre-emerge side. Let's talk about the Pulse products. Well, and don't forget on those pre's, any of the products that have those HPPDs in them, whether it's a Callisto premix, like a Lumax, for example, or something with Lotus in it, 
that's where you could run into some issues with pre-emerge herbicides. Now, I already kind of mentioned a couple of those familiar names of post-emerge products, the Callisto, Laudis, Impact, those products you can't use if you're using those organophosphates down. Now, some may say, well, I'm using a cut rate and it's been yep. a month since I've done it. You're still taking risk out there and we really don't want to see that. If you have you know, other choices that you could use, something like a status, for example, that doesn't have any interaction with those organophosphates, why not do that? Or even if you used buctral atrazine or something like that, you could still be very effective on targeted weeds that you're going after without taking all of that risk. Now we think of ALS type products in corn, they aren't quite as common as what we're using pre-emerge or post-emerge in soybeans, but you still may have some hornet out there and some of the other post-emerge ALS type products that could be problems. Well, once again, this is a major issue and for a lot of us, even for myself, I just wasn't really putting it on the front burner here because I, you know, you just forget that all these people weren't using insecticide for so many years. They weren't using ALS herbicides at all, or even HPPDs a whole lot. And now all of a sudden we've got a lot of farmers that are using insecticide because of the rootworm resistance problems and other issues and just wanting to get more insect control out there. And then we've got all these Roundup resistant weeds. So guys are going away from Roundup. This is now a major, major issue. I was just talking to an agronomist this morning and he was telling me about how he had to make sure he reminded his farmers about this and he had guys switch what they wanted to do for herbicide to other things because they were using an organophosphate insecticide. Now, one other question we get, Brian, is let's just say I switch to Liberty Link crops and I'm going to use Liberty yep. in crop. There's no issue with Liberty interacting with any of these insecticides that you may put down. So you would be safe in that type of rotation. But if you're in a Roundup Ready corn situation where you're going to be mixing some kind of tank mix partner, whether it's a pre-emerge one like a Sure Start or Triple Flex or Lumax or many other choices, or on the post-emerge side, if you're going to add in Callisto Stolatus, Impact, Hornet, a wide variety of products. You have to be cautious. So make sure you're talking to your seed and chemical person to make sure you don't have any of those combination products. So again, to avoid the interaction, I would use force or capture insecticide and post-emerge. If you already used an organophosphate post-emerge, I would use status, buctral, banvil, clarity. You could even throw a little atrazine in. All those are non-ALS, non-HPPD. Now you only have to give on one side of that. Say, hey, That's I right. really want to use counter down. That's fine use the counter down, but just make wise choices with your herbicide selection. Or if you say, yep. you know what, I really need these herbicides, then you better switch things up on the insecticide. Well, once again, just make sure you're paying attention to this on your farm. Make sure you're talking to your agronomist and you know what you're doing going into this year. Another thing you need to know what you're doing going into this year with is our Weed of the Week. It's a tough one. We'll talk about how to control it later in the show.